All right, so today we're looking at the TKD Cycle 7, and this is an F Rollless TKO keyboard that sold last year between July and August. It's starting at around $140 before shipping, and the case can be put together in literal seconds. Now that's satisfying. If you've been following the channel for a while, you know I've been using the QK65 V1 since its release, and it has been a great keyboard so far. It is the one that got me into mechanical keyboards in the first place, but after owning a single keyboard for around two years, I was itching to try something new. I'm an unusual mechanical keyboard enthusiast in the sense that I keep myself up to date with what's happening in the scene, but I rarely see myself craving for buying the newest kit on the block. And even if I can't afford it, I still put the $300 plus keyboards in the questionable financial decision category. So I'm frequently attracted by more affordable boards like this one. Anyway, let's quickly see what you get for your money. Inside the carrying case, we receive the keyboard itself, a set of Ecos V3 stabilizers, your choice of plate and PCB, in my case, an alu plate and a hot swap wired PCB, a key cap and switch combo puller, a simple braided USB-C to A cable, case, plate, and PE foam, and a bag with all the included gaskets and feet for the board, as well as some PCB plugs that you can use to cover the single flex cuts in the top and bottom portion of the PCB. Talking about that PCB for a moment, I really like that it's not full of flex cuts, which we've seen usually contributes to a more muted sound profile. You can build this board with either a set of gasket strips for a firmer typing experience or gasket beans for more flexible feel. For my build, I went with Bison raw linear switches. These are factory loop linears with a PC top, nylon bottom and UMPE stem and a 21 millimeter single stage spring with a bottom out force of 60 grams. And to top it off, I'm using DCX white and black. Let's take a listen. What really sold this board for me, aside from the layout, was the sound. 
Like I've grown tired of the QK65 foamy sound and that board really needs the foam to sound decent in my opinion. The Cycle 7 does not need it and although the alphas are a little bit quiet for my taste, it produces a rich high pitched sound with a very satisfying spacebar. Type and feel is very consistent, it is not super bouncy but it is flexible and soft enough. I am not a fan of extremely soft keyboards so this one is very comfortable to type on for me. The design is honestly nothing to write home about and I'm totally okay with that. Not super flashy at all, it's a box and watch design which I believe contributes to the more affordable price point. My unit came with an immaculate mirror polish stainless steel weight on the back and it also comes with two brass weights on the inside where the batteries will go if you chose a wireless PCB. I believe that one of the most attractive features of this board is its easy assemble bowl catch structure which renders this board extremely easy to take apart and put back together for experimenting, not considering obviously the plate and PCB assembly. In conclusion, I think this board was a great value for all you get. An attractive layout, solid sound profile that does not rely on foam, and an easy build experience. Of course, there are other keyboards coming into the scene with similar design choices and even more flexibility, like the Neo 80 for example. But if there's something I've learned in my very short and limited experience with the hobby is that there's always going to be a new keyboard releasing tomorrow better than the one being sold today for a similar price. In the end, you just have to set off what really attracts you at the moment and makes sense to you financially. With how good these keyboards are getting these days, it is hard to choose wrong. And with that, I'm gonna go type in on my new keyboard to respond to comments or questions that you may have. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.